Well, our next guest manufactures and supplies steel and aluminum to a number of Fortune 500 companies. He says he's already been raising prices and passing them along to his customers this year because of commodity price hikes. What will he do now after hearing the president's plan? And what is the impact, if any, on his factory and workers? Joining us now from Green Bay, Wisconsin, is Alex Kowalski, CEO of Performance Complete Metal Solutions. He is a member of YPO, uh, and I am in your town often every summer. Alex, thank you very much for joining us. Um, here's what's so you hear the argument, right, that the consumer is going to get hurt because prices are going to go up for everything from cans of Coca Cola to automobiles. What do you make of that argument? And because how much have you already been raising your prices? Yeah, so since November, the price of the, the crew index, which we follow, hot rolled steel, is up about 25%. Uh, now, in our business, the steel comes in, the mills produce it, the service centers cut, slit it, level it, and we buy it in 5,000 pound bundles to simplify it. When it comes in our facility, our lasers cut it, we bend it, we weld it, we powder coat it, and it goes out to assembly, and we, and we turn it into commercial turf care equipment, uh, attachments for skid steers and bobcats. So the lion's share of our business is B2B. Almost every customer we have are, are Fortune 500 companies, and their customers are businesses. So I don't think the consumer is going to see it relative to the way we view the world. The second part is that within that whole supply chain of what we do, the steel input is about 15 to 20 percent of the cost of the whole good. There's labor, overhead, other things that happen, engines, wheels, tires, control panels that go on to these whole goods. So in our view, I think it's a little bit of an overreaction in the market. We have been raising prices, but they are not massive or significant in any stretch of the imagination. Alex, I have a question. I understand that you are probably in favor here of this tariff, but many say that the reason President Trump may be able to get this through is because he can say that it is a national security threat to continue with the plan that we currently have in place with regards to steel imports and exports. So I guess I just don't understand, and I'm, I'm not trying to be glib here, but what is the national security threat of importing steel from Canada? Yeah, well, I'm not in politics, so I can't speak to, to the sections that are referenced and that sort of thing. In business, what I can say is our customers will continue to challenge us if we, if we see steel continue to go up to figure out ways to take cost out. And that may be modifying the product, using a thinner gauge steel, using an alternate uh, type of steel. Uh, maybe we do some things so that the, the product can be robotically welded. They'll invest in fixturing. Um, so I think companies are going to do what any business would do when, when the raw material goes up, is they're going to look at options to mitigate that cost impact and eliminate it. Certainly in my business, our customers look to us to help them with that, right? We're a critical part of their supply chains and they lean on us to do those sorts of things. So outside of the political, I'm just going to leave that aside. I don't know if it's national security threat or not. I feel pretty safe here in Green Bay today. Um, if the Badgers win and they beat Michigan State, it might not be as safe tonight. But Outside of that happening, it's, it's a safe industry from, from our side of it here in Wisconsin. But I think what you're going to see is large OEMs pushing back on their suppliers, people like us, to come up with alternative ways to mitigate this cost impact. Where do you get most of your steel? Yeah, it all comes from service centers. Great question. So the mills produce in coils, again, a lot of times 40,000 pound huge coils of steel. And they sell them to service centers in Wisconsin. So we have three or four different sources we use, and they take those large coils and they slit them, bundle them into sizes that, that go into our laser cutters, our machining equipment. But the origin uh, of the steel so is all what of I'm ours at. comes from. Yeah, it, it comes from both. It's both foreign and domestic. Do you have any idea what percentage is which? No, our service centers. You know, we get mill search with every one of them when that it comes come in the door, so we know. Yeah, we don't track it exactly as long as it meets the specs that our customers require. All right, Alex, thank you very much. Alex Kowalski, CEO of Performance hey. Complete Metal Solutions. Thanks. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.